Welcome back to Horrifying Stories. Good evening. We begin our broadcast with breaking news. There's been a suspected fatal shark attack at Little Bay near Malabar. More than a dozen beaches in southeastern Sydney, including Bondi, are closed today after a fatal shark Good attack. Good evening. The victim of Sydney's first fatal shark attack in 59 years was 35-year-old Simon Nellist, an ocean lover from the city south. Breaking news of a fatal shark attack filled television screens in Sydney. It's first in almost 60 years. This is Simon Nellist's horrifying story. Viewer discretion is advised. Simon Nellist was a 35-year-old British expat who after spending two years in the UK's Royal Air Force, decided to move to Australia for good. It all started six years back when he travelled to Australia and immediately fell in love with the beautiful country. A nature lover and certified adventurer, he worked as a diving instructor upon moving to Sydney, and was part of Sydney's scuba diving social club. Undoubtedly, he loved the ocean and was in fact a strong advocate in protecting marine life and preserving its biodiversity. At one point, he expressed opposition and disappointment against the shark mitigation program launched by the New South Wales state government. For him, it not only provided little to no significant protection to humans, but also it did more harm to sharks and the rest of marine life. This sophisticated program, which he was so vocally against, required Sydney's beaches to be protected by nets, sensor drum lines, and constantly roving drones and choppers above the beach area. Every time a shark gets tangled into the net, especially those species that pose a great danger to humans. Tags are attached to their fins, which will then serve as their location trackers before they are released one kilometer away from the area and back into the ocean. The sensor drum lines are two buoys connected to each other. One buoy is anchored on the seabed, while the other buoy has a bait hanging beneath it. Connecting the two buoys is a triggering magnet that is both attached to the line and a communication device. This device sends a signal to the operator once it senses a significant amount of pressure and movement from the line connected to the bait. As soon as the operator receives that signal, they immediately head to the exact location of the drumline to tag and release the shark a kilometer away back into the ocean. On the other hand, drones and helicopters do regular roving checks especially during the peak summer weekends. They thoroughly skin through the waters as they fly above the city's popular beach destinations to check for the presence of these predators. Any sighting will immediately be flagged on high alert to the lifeguards of the beaches nearby, where a siren will be blasted off calling on all people to get out of the water at once. For locals and regular tourists, this was a pretty normal scenario in Sydney's beaches. It was February 16, 2022. Simon went to Little Bay Beach, a beach in Sydney which is more popular to families who would like a quick trip to the beach. Simon frequented Little Bay Beach to have a leisurely swim, but this time, he went there to prepare himself for a charity ocean swim that he was set out to join that weekend at another beach nearby. At around 4.35 in the afternoon, at Bucken Point just off the shore of Little Bay Beach, a frantic scream and the sound of a loud crash into the water broke the fun and relaxing mood at the beach. Suddenly, the beach was filled with terror and suspense, as beachgoers saw for themselves the shark attacking Simon off the coast. Those who were fishing nearby had a much closer view of the horrifying attack, and some were even able to record it on camera. The hungry predator was a three-meter-long great white shark. Out of nowhere, it sprung up from below the ocean, snatching Simon's body as it clenched its sharp teeth onto the trunk of his body. Its pointed triangular teeth and thick gums slowly moved as it devoured its helpless victim. The horrendous attack was so sudden that it caught Simon off guard, unable to at least even attempt to swim fast for his life. It was too powerful that with just one bite, it rendered the former Air Force member unconscious, unable to even put up a fight. The shark dragged Simon down into the ocean, continuing to prey on human flesh with its lethal bite. In no time, the crystal blue ocean water turned into crimson red, as blood was all over the area of the attack, until the next set of waves came to wash it away. Onlookers watched this dreadful scene unfold, with one of the witnesses even recounting in a later interview how graphic and appalling it was, that it made him vomit. Now, for great whites, this is a common hunting method. 
They're known for their speed and ability to blend in with the color of their surroundings. Great whites often stay in the deep, swimming while scanning for prey that is lingering on the ocean's surface. As soon as it locks its eyes on a target, it then charges with lightning speed upward towards the surface and hits its target, then immediately bites it. Great whites can have up to a total of a thousand teeth. Its saw-like tooth can devour prey and kill it with just one bite. They usually start feeding on smaller fish and rays, but bigger great white sharks tend to go for seals, sea lions, and small whales. In Simon's case, it has been believed that the shark might have mistaken him for a seal, because of the black wetsuit that he was wearing during his practice swim. Meanwhile, back at the shore, High Alert has already been activated, enforcing immediate evacuation from the waters. Lifeguards quickly hopped on their tugboats and jet skis, mounting a search and rescue operation for the diver. Helicopters and drones have also started to hover around the area to look for Simon. It took them 90 minutes before Simon was found. Not only was he found lifeless, but also in pieces. Immediately, his body including the dismembered parts seen to be floating were retrieved and brought back to shore. However, the jet skis, boats, drones and choppers continued to search, this time for the predator that was still on the loose. A total of 13 beaches nearby, from the popular Bondi Beach, east of Sydney, to Cronulla Beach on the south, have been immediately closed to the public as well extending their search to that long stretch of beaches. It has been the fourth shark attack recorded in Australia for the year 2022, but this has been the first fatal shark attack around Sydney after around 60 years. The last one was still back in 1963. Each year, an average of 20 shark attacks happen in Australia. In 2020 alone, seven had been fatal, while there were only two fatal attacks in 2021. Yet despite this, historical records show that fatal shark attacks are very rare, with an average of only less than one person per year. Sadly, the predator that mercilessly attacked Simon Nellist remains unsighted. Eventually, the charity ocean swim that Simon was preparing for that fateful day cancelled their event in honor and respect of his passing. His family back in the UK, whom he hasn't seen for almost two years due to the pandemic that shut the doors of almost every country in the world, will only have Simon's remains to hold for the last time. Instead of heartwarming hellos at their much-awaited reunion, suddenly, it has now turned into a heart-wrenching final goodbye. To make matters even worse, Simon was also supposedly set out to marry a year prior to his longtime girlfriend Jesse, but they were forced to push back their big day, again due to the restrictions the pandemic has brought. They were planning to push through with the wedding that year, once most of the restrictions ease up and the country's borders begin to open. Close friends and loved ones have been looking forward to a celebration of love at his wedding, but in a tragic turn of events, will now be showing up to mourn at his funeral. Thank you for making it this far. If you like this story, we would greatly appreciate it if you could hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. This would mean a lot to us. Again, thank you and see you in the next one.